pretty excited today. So first things first, uh, this is my first time I've ever uploaded a video outside of sequence. So last episode, I believe, was 134. This is episode 162 or 163, so I skipped about 30 videos there. Those will come out right after this. This one's a little time sensitive because today is March 18th. Uh, St. Croix Victory Ride is not supposed to get released until March 19th, which is tomorrow, but somehow mine got delivered here a day early. So we are going to unbox this thing, take a look at it, and I still got about two hours before sunset, so we're going to take this thing out on the water and try to review it. So first things first, let's open this thing up. I already took the top off, but I have not actually looked inside. So, alright, take a look at this thing. So I ended up getting the 7 foot uh, 1 inch medium fast uh, medium action medium power fast action so we drop this down like always these rods come packed in this little plastic sleeve I'm always so worried that these things are just gonna like I'm gonna screw something up and they're gonna get scratched up or something but let's take the plastic off here nicely I would like to start with the butt section just because it's a little bit a little bit stiffer than the tip and I don't want to rip the tip. But let's pull this thing off. And here is the first look at the St. Croix Victory. So this is a brand new series from St. Croix, like I mentioned, supposed to get released tomorrow. And this is this is a very interesting rod. So first up, uh, the blank. It is uh, what they call, I think they're SC3 Plus, right? Yeah, SC3 Plus Carbon. So it is a combination of their SC3 and their SC6. Uh, the diagram I was able to see, it looks like the SC6, which is their top level, their super sensitive, super strong material. It's on the inside diameter of the rod, and then the outer diameter is their SC3. Now their SC3 is kind of the middle of the line. Uh, it's what their Mojo Bass is made out of, uh, their Avid is made out of it. So the SC3 by itself is good enough, but with the addition of the SC6, there's some hype around it. So we're going to see if the hype is worth it. So first up, we'll just talk about this thing here. Uh, number one, the kind of handle here. I love split grip handles. I think they are extremely uh, comfortable to hold when you're casting. Just a nice little tapered edge here. Uh, a little takes off a little bit of weight. It's not too much. Uh, it is a fairly light rod. We'll compare it to the Mojo Bass here in a second. Uh, I do like the kind of uh, foam here at the bottom that transitions into cork, but I always prefer cork to foam. And this is a this is a downer for me. I don't like the cork, uh, the foam right here. I'd much prefer this to be cork. However, that being said, I love this handle because if you look, there are no threads anywhere. So when I'm holding a rod, I love to be touching cork or if I have to foam. I just hate having those threads kind of grind into your palm. I'll show you the Mojo Bass here again in a second. So I do love this handle. I just wish they would have put uh, cork on this instead of foam. The reason they did that I think is to save money. Uh, what I think they did with this rod is they said how can we make a very expensive rod as cheap as possible. So the price point for this thing is $190, which is about $50 more than the Mojo Bass. If we come up here, we'll look at the guides, and this is uh, another point I wanted to make here. Uh, so the guides, one of them, the ones that are on this rod, cost about $1.20, $1.30. Now, if we look at a more expensive rod, which I'm sure you can see by me here, uh, let's take a look at these uh, Legend Elite Panfish. So these guides cost about $10 a piece. So this is a $360 rod, and the guides on it cost... Uh, over a hundred dollars. So about one-third of the price is in the guides. Here, it's a hundred ninety dollar rod and the guides only cost twelve or thirteen dollars. So on this rod here, the guides only make up about five percent of the price. On the Legend Elite, it's about thirty percent of the price. So in my opinion, what they, what they kind of did here was they spent a lot of money on the blank, right, because their SC6 is expensive, but then they kind of went cheap on a lot, a lot of the other parts. So like the foam, foam is cheaper than cork. The handle's not super expensive, but most handles aren't. But the guides, I think, is where they tried to save a whole bunch of money. Nothing wrong with them. They are Fuji guides. Uh, I believe they're aluminum oxide. But a little bit cheaper than what you would expect on some more expensive rods. 
but like I mentioned, so this is the 7 foot uh, medium power fast action. Got the Syncor logo there. You come up, you got the Victory. This is the VTS 71 MF. And then we've got all these guides here, which you will be able to see in a minute. Now let's just compare this real quick to the Mojo Bass before we go out on the water. That is this rod right here. So both of these, same power, same action, same size. So the Mojo Bass is right here. And if we compare it to the St. Croix Victory, uh, very similar. I really enjoy fishing the Mojo Bass. I think the Victory is kind of going to be that one step up. And real quick, uh, without even fishing it, if these two rods are the same, I'm spending the extra money on the Victory uh, for one reason and one reason only. Uh, the Victory comes with a 15 year warranty, whereas the Mojo Bass has a 5 year. So, over the course of those extra 10 years, that comes out to $4 a year. So I think that extra $4 a year is well worth it uh, for a... Uh, even if it's the same rod, but it should be a nicer rod for the price. So enough of me talking here, let's go out on the water and let's fish this thing. Alright, we are out on the water. I put a 2500 uh, Shimano Sahara out here with 10 pound mono. Uh, this rod is rated for between 6 and 20 pounds. I think 20 would be overkill on this. I think 6 to 12 would be more more reasonable, but a lot of people like to fish heavier uh, heavier gear. And, uh, we are going to be fishing a 1 8 ounce jig head with a soft plastic uh, Nico Helgramite. So this is a little bit lighter than what this rod is rated for. It's rated to be between uh, 3 16 of an ounce and 5 8 of an ounce. So that is essentially 2 16 so a little bit lighter. But we're going to fish it anyway. Going to test the sensitivity with this thing. And then I think we're going to put on a jerk bait because most of uh, St. Croix's medium fast rods I think are pretty good jerk bait rods. So those are going to be the two presentations we're going to be going with today. At least that's the plan. Now let's see how this rod fishes and how the fish cooperate. Alright, so here's a little bit better look at the lure we are going to be starting out with. Let's give it a cast on out there. That was not a good cast, but that is completely my fault. I angled this rod way too far down. The cork is super, super soft. Feels good. Sensitivity is pretty good too. I think it's a little bit better than the Mojo, but let's keep fishing and find out. All right, so we've been fishing this thing for about 15 minutes now. Had one hit that I missed, but number one, I love the sensitivity of this rod. Felt the hit really, really well. I can feel the jig bouncing off the bottom pretty well, even though this lake is mostly, it's really grassy and weedy. So kind of hard to feel the bottom, but I can feel that well, felt the hit really well. I love the action of it. It's a fast action rod. Really, it might even be closer to like an extra fast maybe, like it's literally just the top, the top fifth of the rod that's bending under, under the weight when I'm popping this jig off the bottom. And then the handle is okay. I love that there's no threads digging into my palm. But again, not a fan of holding or touching the foam. I like touching the cork, the cork's really nice. And now that I'm noticing it, the handle here is really, really long. Even this part here when I'm grabbing on a cast, very long handle. I'll prefer if it was a little bit shorter because sometimes I like to put my finger uh, up on the blank just to get a little bit more sensitivity. And it's kind of hard to do when there's cork there. I'd have to hold way up here. But so far, so good. Really liking the rod. go fish on right on the drop feels like a decent one is that a largemouth or a peacock I missed several fish today which was a little annoying good size largemouth let's get him on up here first fish on the new victory rod let's take a look at this guy all right so I missed a couple hits today but I think I think I just dropped a little right on top of this guy's head so first bass on the new Victory Rod. It's a, it's a nice one, nothing too small, nothing too big. I'm happy with one. 
Let's get it back. Let's keep fishing. So we got one on the new victory. I think the sensitivity of this rod is better than what I was expecting. Uh, it's tough to feel the bottom here because it's a really grassy and weedy lake, but I'm able to feel all these hits and especially that last one really, really well. So sensitive, sensitivity on this thing is really nice. Uh, let's keep fishing. I want to get another one on the soft plastic and then I think we're going to switch it up to the jerk bait. Fish on. Smaller one this time. Oh, are you kidding me? Huh, it's a bluegill. Come on up here, guy. All right, fish number two is this really nice size bluegill. I don't get a lot of bluegills on the Helgramites, but when I do, they are a very nice size. And this is a fatty. I don't think he's my PB, but he's pretty close. Beautiful colors, nice copper nose. So I think now we are gonna switch up to a moving lure, probably that jerk bait. So let's get this guy back. Let's go, fish on. This little large mouth. I was just kidding about the uh, jerk bait. Made one more cast with a Helgramite. All right, thought about making one more cast with the Helgramite. Sure glad I did, cause two casts back to back, we got two fish. So a little dink of a bass, but still counts. Let's get this guy back, and now let's put on a jerk bait. All right, here's the next lure we are gonna be going with. It is a size eight X-Rap from Rapala. I believe it is one quarter ounce. Now the weight of this lure uh, is more in line with what this rod is rated for, right? Like I mentioned earlier, it's between uh, 3 16 and 5 eighths of an ounce. So a quarter ounce fits pretty perfectly. Now the fast action of the rod tip here, I think is perfect for fishing jerk baits. Doesn't take too much pressure to be able to make these lures do what you need them to do. So a simple twitch, twitch, pause is what we're gonna be starting out with. Let's see if we can get a fish to bite. All right, so we are about 15 minutes or so of fishing this little jerk bait, and fish is great. Number one, this thing cast a mile. The little Helgramite on a light jig head casted well, but this thing, you just fling it out there with minimal effort and it goes flying. Also, love the fast action tip. It doesn't take a whole lot of force to make this lure bounce around and do what you need it to do. So now all you gotta do is get a fish to bite this. fish on. You got one right at the bank here. A little large mouth. Alright, this guy came out of nowhere. Basically, my lure was uh, probably within a foot of the bank, but large mouth number three, probably kind of in, in the middle there. Bigger than that last one I caught, smaller than the first one. So we'll let it go. The extra wrap produced, the victory produced. Maybe we'll get one more. So really like fishing the victory with the little uh, X-Wrap there. Cast a mile, just a flick of the wrist makes this thing go on forever. Very easy to make it twitch and do anything you wanted. The tip is uh, fast action, doesn't take a whole lot of force. And even right there, just nice steady retrieve. This rod does it. You can feel every little vibration of the lip there. Nice little rod for jerk baits. So we'll try to get one more, but sunset's coming up, so that might be the last one. All right, so sun is setting. I think this is gonna be our last cast. So right now, I really do like the victory. Let's head back home, and then we'll do a final little review after one day of fishing with it. All 
All right, so first time fishing the St. Croix Victory, and I gotta say, I, I do really like the rod. So usually when I do these kind of reviews, I like to start out with two simple questions. So number one, do I like the rod? Uh, absolutely, that is a yes. And then number two, and I think this one's a little bit more important, would I buy it again? And this kind of means, do I think that it's worth the price? And that is another yes. So there's uh, some St. Croix rods that I answered no to these, even though I do like them. Uh, because I don't think that the price that they cost justifies uh, their performance. So an example of that would be, let's say, one of these Legend Extremes. So this is the uh, old school Legend Extreme 6 foot 10 medium light. I do love this rod. However, I do not think that it is worth $430, uh, retail at least. It doesn't do, let's say, twice as good as the St. Croix Victory, even though it's priced twice higher. So that is one thing that I like to look at. I think the Victory is a very nice rod, and I think it is priced in a very good spot. So a little bit like I mentioned all the way in the beginning, what I think that they did is they went out and tried to make a very expensive rod as cheap as possible. So I mentioned the guides, I mentioned the handle. Uh, let's talk about their technology, they haven't done that yet. So uh, IPC, Integrated Polycurve, a lot of their rods have that. Uh, the Mojo Bass, a little bit cheaper than this, which I think I'm going to compare this rod to a lot. It does have that. Uh, the Avid series does have that, but that's kind of where the similarities stop. So this rod also has ART, uh, Advanced Reinforcement Technology. Uh, the Mojo and the Avids don't have that. It has uh, FRS, Fortified Resin System. Again, uh, the Mojo and the Avid does not have that. This one does. So I think St. Croix really put a lot of money into the blank, and I think it fishes that way. I'll talk about that in a second. But then they went cheap in some other areas, like the $1 guides as opposed to like the $10 guides on a uh, Legend Elite, and then also this handle. So let's talk about the uh, day of fishing. Uh, number one, the handle. I I'm split because I love how it doesn't have any threads here, but it's very long. I can't feel the blank, which I do kind of like to do sometimes. And I hate the foam. I just really hate the foam. So if we're going to look at this rod and compare it to, got a whole bunch here, let's say, where is it? The Avid, which is basically in the same price point. This is the Avid X. Essentially, it has the same handle, but it's all cork, and it's a little bit uh, smaller here. It's got a very small top section here, so you're able to feel the blank really well, right? So it's basically the same handle. I just prefer all cork and a little bit smaller like they have here on the Avid X. And then if we're going to look at the Mojo Bass, which basically I'm going to compare this rod to, uh, oh, don't want to drop it. Once again, it's cork. It has the threads here, which I don't like, but again, you're able to feel the, the feel the blank. I think the handle is a little bit more comfortable, a little bit smaller, a little bit slimmer. So that's kind of where that stands. But if we're going to talk about the actual, the, the rod itself, the blank, I think it is far superior to both the Avid X and the Mojo Bass. So the SC3 Plus, kind of their SC6, SC3 blend, I think is really, really nice. Uh, very, very sensitive. The Mojo is sensitive enough. I think the Avid X steps up a little bit in sensitivity, even though the blanks are made of the same material. I think it's probably because of the micro guides. But on the Victory, I could say it is definitely more sensitive than the Mojo, at least in my opinion, and a little bit more sensitive than the Avid. I think if they put maybe better guides on here, uh, maybe, Kind of, that sensitivity would be even higher compared to the Avid. Uh, but then the performance of the blank, fast action, I think it's I think it's even a little bit faster than the Mojo, we could check that in a second. But top fifth of the blank, really, really nice to uh, kind of lift these little jig heads up off the bottom and also to fish that jerk bait. Very, very minimal uh, effort to make that bait move a lot. So actually, let's, this isn't the best way to measure, but this bends literally a little bit of force it bends maybe a foot down and if we're going to look at the mojo same size same power and all that if i bend it let's see i think this bends maybe instead of a foot down maybe it's like 16 18 inches down so i think it bends a little bit uh further down so they're supposed to be the same action i believe the the uh the victory though it is a little bit faster of an action and the next thing that I want to say is, I believe the Mojo and a lot of synchro rods, they're a little bit tip heavy. Not a, not a huge deal, but it does make it fishing a little bit uncomfortable. So, uh, I paired this up with a 2500 Shimano Sahara, I fished it for a couple hours. I don't think this is uh, really tip heavy at all. 
So we can test that. Let's find the kind of center of gravity here. Um, oh, a little bit higher up. This is tough. All right. Well, probably about right there. So I don't know what that is. Probably about four inches above the reel. So if we take the reel off here, we're going to put this on the mojo. And we will check where the center of gravity is there. Once again, I have fished the Mojo a lot, great rod, but I do think it is just a little bit tip heavy. So not a huge deal, but it does make it a slightly uncomfortable if you fish for a couple hours. So if we're going to look at this rod, actually, well, I think actually they're probably about the same. Maybe that one just feels lighter, but maybe by about an inch or so, the center of gravity changed a little bit. So. Nothing, not as big as I thought it was, but for some reason, I think the victory felt a little bit better in hand. So, kind of final verdict here. Uh, do I like it? Yes. Would I buy it again? Yes. Where would I rank it? Definitely better than the Mojo and worth the extra $40, $50, 60 whatever it comes out to depending on the model. Number one, because of the extra 10-year warranty. Made in the U.S., uh, you're going to pay 4 or $5 a year extra for that 10-year warranty. So essentially, that's, that's pennies a day if you fish a lot. So I think that that by itself is well worth it. If you like the made in US part, which I don't care too much about, um, that's another bonus for this rod. But I do think it, it outfishes the Mojo. I think it's definitely more sensitive, a little bit lighter, a little bit better to hold. And I think it's kind of like a bass specific Avid, even a little bit better than the Avid series, in my opinion. And I think this is where you're gonna get the most bang for your buck as well. Uh, I always thought the Avid series was a good bang for your buck rod. I've never fished a Legend Tournament series, but I think once you go a pa past like the Avid price point, that $200 price point, there is just a very dis diminishing level of return. Like the Legend Extreme, very nice rod, but not worth. I don't think it's worth $200 more than this. I've got another Legend Extreme. I've got another what is this Legend Elite. So extremely nice rods. I just don't think they're worth paying twice as much as you would for a Victory or an Avid. So that's my take on the Victory. Great rod. If they change the handle here, I think I would absolutely love it. But the way it sits, I don't know. I can't really complain too much. Beautiful rod. Glad I got to fish the day early. Hope you enjoyed the review. Let me know if you have any questions. And stay tuned for some more videos because I'm sure I'm going to be fishing uh, the St. Croix Victory. A whole lot more coming up. So I'll see you guys next time.